Well, Novak Djokovic's fade in the Australian Open next week now rests squarely with the country's immigration minister. In the coming days, we will see whether the minister will revoke the tennis star's reinstated visa. Djokovic is hitting the practice courts under the pressure of criticism over his vaccination status and the investigation into possible inconsistencies on his travel documents. Well, meantime, he has been named the number one seed for men's singles, and he has been drawn to go up against a fellow Serb in the first round. Uh, Scott McLean is live with us from Belgrade, Serbia, with more on the reaction there. Uh, but first, I want to go to Paula Hancock's live from Melbourne, because we are awaiting this decision from the immigration minister. Uh, why do we know? What, what's, what's the holdup all about? Well, at this point, it, it's not clear what the holdup is. I mean, there was speculation he would make his uh, decision. The immigration minister, Alex Hawke, today, well, choose, uh, Thursday, I should say. It's now the early hours of Friday, so uh, it, it, it appears that it might be in the next 24 hours. The assumption is, with the Australian Open starting on Monday, if he was going to make a decision, it would have to be soon. But we still don't know for sure if he is going to decide to try and revoke the visa of, uh, of Novak Djokovic. Now, we did hear from Scott Morrison today that the Australian Prime Minister, and he once again pointed out uh, that, uh, that, that the policy is very clear for coming into Australia, that you do have to be fully vaccinated or you do have to be uh, have a medical exemption showing that uh, there's a medical reason why you cannot have uh, the COVID-19 vaccination uh, and he also pointed out that having a visa is very different to having the vaccination status of being able to enter the country uh, answering one of uh, Djokovic's lawyers uh, arguments that they had had a visa accepted so they thought that he was able to come into the country but Djokovic himself is is continuing to train uh, at the uh, the Rod Laver arena here in Melbourne he is uh, trying to mentally and physically prepare himself uh, for the the Australian Open which does start in a few days of course it is still in limbo whether he will actually be there yeah exactly all right Paula, Paula Hancock's pressing Melbourne thank you uh, to Scott McLean in uh, Belgrade obviously uh, not a great deal of sympathy for the tennis player in Melbourne uh, given Melbourne has really lived under one of the longest COVID lockdowns in the world uh, surely he's got a, a fair bit of support where you are yeah, and certainly Serbia has had not exactly the same experience as Australia had, essentially being cut off from the rest of the world for the last two years. But as we wait for the decision from the Australians, the reality here in Serbia is that there are still some questions about the positive and negative uh, COVID test that Novak Djokovic returned when he was in this country. We know that the Australian Border Force is investigating some of the irregularities around the, those tests. But so far, public health authorities in this country have said precious little to actually clear up any of the confusion, Linda. Now, the president, Alexander Vucic, he was on public television last night to say that he was proud to have supported Novak Djokovic. He also says that, look, people should get vaccinated. And when it comes to Djokovic's admission that he uh, ended up breaking his quarantine, the president said in an indirect way that, look, if you know that you're positive, obviously you should not be going out. But it seems like the president, like many Serbs, is pretty reluctant to take a national hero down from his pedestal. The streets of Belgrade are filled with tributes and memorials to prime ministers, royalty, and homegrown heroes. But these days, no one is revered quite like Novak Djokovic, the world's number one tennis player now struggling to stay in Australia, in large part because he's unvaccinated. You know, we are Serbs. We are on his side, so everything he said is right. It's a private thing, so I am vaccinated, but... If you don't want to do that, you know, you, it's okay. It's his personal choice, and it's an individual thing. That's how we, most people see it that way here. Serbs are watching this drama down under just as new COVID infections here are hitting record highs, and the Serbian government continues to struggle to convince people to actually take the vaccine. Even today, less than 60% of the adult population has been vaccinated. Do you think that he should have taken the vaccine? Uh, I think that uh, a vaccine is the poison, so I think that he don't give it to his body.
In Serbia, there's an indoor mask mandate and a mandatory quarantine period after a positive test. But Djokovic admits he didn't immediately isolate so that he could do an interview with a French newspaper, drawing subtle criticism even from his most powerful defender, the Serbian president. If you know you're infected, you should not go out and infect others. But in Belgrade, outrage is tough to come by. I can't comment, honestly. He's our, he's our Nola Casserol. <laughs> well then, it was an error of judgment. Well, well. You, you're not too upset about it, though? Well, I know about that. He said he had the mask, he, he was on the distance, and so on. Court documents show that Djokovic tested positive on December 16th and then negative on December 22nd. Djokovic's positive result came after 8 p.m. on the 16th, but he claims he wasn't notified until the next day, after he attended an event unmasked with children. We wanted to see how the testing system works, so we had producer Nada Bashir take the same PCR test in Belgrade. Her result was emailed just two minutes after the result timestamp on the certificate, though others who have been tested say the time for results to be emailed can vary widely. The Serbian Public Health Institute did not reply to CNN's attempt to seek clarification. The health ministry directed us to comments from the government earlier this week. I don't know when he got the test results, when he actually saw them, and at what point in time he became aware of testing positive. I only know that the date is December 16th. As for when he got them, when he actually looked at them, I really don't know. It's something that Novak's team should say. So, Linda, there is a press conference being held tomorrow by Serbian public health officials, and so we are hoping to get some of our questions clarified around Novak Djokovic's test here in Serbia. Meanwhile, the country hit a sad milestone today. More than 13,000 people have now died in this country from COVID-19. Yeah, like so many countries around Europe right now, cases really are surging. Scott McLean, good to have you with us. Thanks so much.